Thank you. Delegates, every convention we take a moment to remember Joy Langan, who was a wonderful sister, a labor leader, and an NDP MP. In an effort to keep her memory alive, we hand out the Joy Langan Award to a woman in the labor movement who goes above and beyond. It's never an easy task to select a recipient. We are a movement full of women who are skilled, committed, and passionate. Past recipients include Angela Shira in 2010 and Brenda Wagg in 2012. It's my great honor to introduce Lisa Langan, Joy's daughter, here to pay tribute to her mother and to announce this year's recipient. Lisa. Thank you to the BC Fed for setting up this award in memory of my mother, Joy Langan, and recognizing her as a leader for political women's involvement in the labor movement. For people who didn't know Joy, she was a fighter and a tireless volunteer. She began her fight when she became the first woman apprentice typesetter at Pacific Press, at a time when they still used hot lead to create typeface. Her need for affordable childcare as a single woman on an apprentice wage drew her to become active in her union, the International Typographical Union. Eventually, she became the first woman elected to the ITU executive and was the first woman executive officer of the BC Fred representing the ITU. Jo is active in the NDP and worked on it every election campaign that I can remember. She sat on the provincial and federal NDP executive, and in 1988, she was elected member of parliament for the federal riding of Mission Coquitlam. As well as being the labor critic, she also successfully fought to have unsafe safe breast implants removed from the Canadian market, saving women that had fought breast cancer from suffering further illness and disfigurement as she had. <laughs> Joy was the first director of the Labour Participation Department at United Way, a CEP national representative, and retirement she remained active and became president of BC Forum. My mother felt strongly about the mentoring of women by women in the labor movement and politics, knowing that we cannot advance the rights of women without being a strong voice at the table. In recognition of that, these are the criteria we look for in recipients. A trade unionist and also a leader in her community. Dedicated to equity and the application of feminist lens in her union and community work. Dedicated to labor activism, which may include holding an elected office or having held a position with her union and or her community. And dedicated to advancing democratic principles through political activism or holding elected office. This year's recipient, Deborah Payment, embodies these qualities. Deborah has been a director and secretary of her union, the Compensation Employees Union, and organized the first CEU Women's Committee and Women's Conferences. She has worked on the union's diversity committee and the CEU WCB Harassment Committee. She has lobbied for on-site daycare and laid the framework for the first employee drug and alcohol assistance program. Politically, Deborah has been on the executive of several riding constituencies, sat on the Provincial Executive Committee of the NDP, and ran as an NDP MLA candidate in Surrey Cloverdale. As well as Deborah's labor and political involvement, Deborah has been a leader in her community. Living with Parkinson's has driven Deborah to sit on the board of directors of the Canadian Association of Disability Management Coordinators, has been on the board of directors of the Fraser Valley Brain Injury Association, Deborah has worked on Surrey's family mentoring program, mentoring single mothers in transition, and was president of the Surrey Female Hockey Association, where she implemented a community service requirement for senior players. Her nominator describes her as someone that has a strong dedication and a, fair, a sense of fairness and community, someone who makes a real difference in people's lives. Deborah genuinely cares about people and is dedicated to achieving the best outcome possible fighting tirelessly for our members. So it is with great pleasure that I present the 2014 Joy Lang and Social Justice Award to Sister Deborah Payment.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, we got two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. That's really overwhelming. Um, I would like to say thank you to my nominators, of course, and to the selection committee, and to my union brothers and sisters who've been so supportive to me. But really, this is the kind of thing that needs to be shared with so many people. The kind of work we do, I've never worked alone, and I have struggled with seeing this as an individual achievement when there's so many people that have contributed to anything that we've done on that list. But if you would permit me one very personal thank you, I would like to thank my daughter. The only child of a working single mother who is politically active, that's someone who gave to the cause. <laughs> right, Lisa? That kid slept in a stroller on a picket line. She carried signs and marches before she could read them. <laughs> when I campaigned, she went with me. Even though as a teenager, she clearly had better things to do. <laughs> and probably the most difficult one for me is that she spent way too many hours in daycare waiting for me, the last mommy at pickup again. And I think a lot of people in the room can relate to that. But I'm here to tell you that she's okay. <laughs> Childcare works. If you have quality child care, she's a Red Seal electrician. She's a member of the IBEW. She's one of the best people you ever want to meet, and she's in the gallery. So would you help me say thank you to Jacqueline Payments? Yeah. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I always wanted to do that. And the same goes for the family of every person in this room. And before I go, I have one more thing I'd like to bring up. Because what kind of activist would let an audience like this slip by without an ask, right? <laughs> so, if you'll indulge another request. And it's about workers' compensation. No surprise there. Uh, we're going to hear a lot about it this week. The focus is primarily lately on health and safety, as it rightly should be. But I want to remind us that there's other work to do as well. In 2002, this government made changes to the compensation system that have been absolutely devastating to workers, like the loss of lifetime pensions. And I don't want us to forget, that has not yet been repaired, and a lot more has happened since then. But what's really starting to scare me I'm going to get wound up about this, is it starting to feel normal. If you think about it, there are people who have worked in this province for more than a decade. They've never known the board any other way. People like Jacqueline. For people in this house, we know what that system can be and should be. So I'm asking you to fight for a fair, comprehensive system that's fully employer-funded, publicly administered, jointly governed, and true to the principles upon which it was founded, which is for all workers, not just employers. you to take up that fight. I'm asking you to remember where the problem really comes from and take the fight to the right level, but take that fight and never give up. Myself, I am going to be making my exit from the workplace through no choice of my own, but I'm going to transfer whatever knowledge I do have to the next generation and get the hell out of the way. I promise you that I will be cheering you on in solidarity from the sidelines which really means a lawn chair at the lake. <laughs> but I will be 
forever in solidarity onward. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Proof positive that a true activist never stops advocating for what she believes in. <laughs> <laughs>